Hello and welcome to another episode of the Small YouTuber Podcast. Today I have two guests, which is a first in Small YouTuber Podcast history. Uh, we've got Ellie Marie TV, who has uh, about 900 subscribers, 100,000 views, and has been making content since 2018. And we have John from the YouTube channel uh, Killick, who has uh, about 1,500 subscribers and 200,000 views. Uh, welcome both to the small YouTuber podcast. Thanks for joining me. And yeah, good to be here. How are things with you both? How, how's lockdown been treating you? Um, yeah, lockdown's been pretty good. It's definitely been a time to kind of reflect and see what I want to do and take a little bit of time of where I want to take my YouTube channel and what I want to do with that. So, you know, I've had some time to, to, to think about where I want to take my channel, what I want to do. So there's been definitely some like silver lining in um, in lockdown for me for sure. Because obviously, John, you're in uh, Vancouver, right? So mm -hmm. um, the the rules may have been slightly different than than the two of us in the UK. Early on here, we were doing really good, you know, Canada and stuff. We were kind of maintaining the virus and everything in a kind of healthier way, wasn't spreading as much. But up until recently, it's been getting a little bit worse. So it's getting a bit a little bit more restricted. Um, but now that the vaccine's getting rolled out and um, I'm actually able to make my appointment for my vaccine um, in the next couple of weeks. So that's good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Do you know which vaccine yeah. you're getting? Which brand? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. Why is, is there one that's better than the other? Not necessarily. Or... Um, I mean, I, okay. I've had my first dose of the the, the dreaded Oxford AstraZeneca one with the, the blood clot okay. risk or whatever, but I mean, right, that's but, fine. Um, yeah, such a small percentage that actually oh, goes wrong. Minuscule. I don't know why yeah. they're making such a fuss about it. <laughs> I think yeah. it's because none of the none of the none of the uh, media outlets have have stocks in AstraZeneca, so they can afford to <laughs> to play it down. Yeah, push it down. Yeah. Uh, Ellie, how about you? Yeah, things have been going on all right over here. That I mean, when we first kind of locked down here in the UK, is when I really sort of went full full on with the youtube because i was furloughed so it was literally like there's nothing else i can do so i'll just make loads of youtube videos and been carrying it on so it's not been too bad yeah I mean, we had a, a guest our previous guest jack um he'd been furloughed as well and he was focusing on his channel and he was like yeah it's like getting paid to do youtube sort of indirectly because yeah. you're not working <laughs> but you're getting paid essentially to make youtube videos which is yeah. uh, pretty cool so the, the reason that we are all three together is because we are, we've all signed up. We've paid the, the $200 for AirRacks Creator Now program, which is a six week course. I'm going to make a whole video about this actually at the end of the six weeks. So um, look out for that. <laughs> um, but so what for, for both of you, why did you sign up for Creator Now and what, um, you know the 200 bucks it, it's it's a big investment what did, what did you think that you would get out of it i'm just kind of in the mindset now that i'm not gonna stop until i get somewhere on youtube i think yeah. a lot of people kind of come on this platform thinking they'll post one video and blow up overnight but i mean if you think of anything in life like people that i know it's a lot different but if you want to become like a doctor or a lawyer you've got to study for god knows how many years and then you finally get a chance to actually like start doing stuff so it is definitely like a long game, I think, YouTube and being able to like learn all the skills. Like I could go to university now and spend three years, you know, studying film, um, which is great. But I think I spoke a lot. I almost went to university and I spoke a lot to the tutor there who said, basically, if you're wanting to go into like the digital space, the traditional film course isn't really designed to set you up for that. It's very much for the BBC, ITV kind of like the Hollywood industry. And I think paying $200, even though it's a lot for a six week course, if you were gonna sort of compare that to university fee fees, it's 3000 pounds for a term in university. So we're actually getting a bargain for the, like the advice and skills that were being taught. So that's the main reason I did it. It's not quite the same, you know, the length or the, uh, the intensity yeah. as, as a yeah. university degree, but um, yeah, it's still you know, value for money. I think it's it's definitely uh, 
It's definitely up there. And also I saw that Airac commented on your video that you made about getting him to a, a million subscribers. So yeah, did, yeah. you've got that little that connection there with the man himself. It, to be fair, we worked like really hard on that video. So it was so rewarding to see him like commenting on it. Like I was editing on Christmas Day just to get it up to make sure that he saw it before he like came off the island. So I was really happy to see that. <laughs> it was a payoff, definitely. So. And, and John, what, what inspired you to join the program and uh, shell out the 200 big ones? For me, it was the, 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 the accountability of posting a video every week. Um, I really like that. I really like that kind of idea behind it. What I was doing with my channel before, I was kind of making videos, but I would kind of overcraft them or I would spend so much time building them. And, and that, that just that discipline to post a video every week and to take everything I know and, and to just kind of solidify it down into, into one little video in one week and have to cut so much stuff out or, or decide this and that. I feel like it's exactly what I needed. Um, I, I always felt like, oh, if I just spend a lot of time and I make a really good video, it could go viral. But what I didn't realize is that what I actually needed was just this repetitive craft of continuously building my videos and reiterating that way. Because I really feel like if you want to make a long video, you have to really, really understand how to make a short video and how to make consistent videos. Because if you're making a really long video, you don't understand these fundamentals then you're kind of just not really making a good use of your time. So just that fact of that, like we're making a video every week and then the extra that I've been getting from this program that is more, way more than $200 is all the advice I've been getting. It's just crazy. You know, I've, I've done, you know, Daryl Eve's kind of YouTube formula and like all these different little things. And I'm still learning stuff from them. Like the, the uh, Logan Paul's editor, um, how he was talking about the, the entry points into your, um, into your thumbnail it was like mind blowing for me. That was so valuable. And then, um, just all the other things about how you're like formulating and kind of putting your video together and everything like that. Like I'm just constantly learning new things and constantly blown away. And um, it's really helped me think about how I want to make my videos. And I've always thought, cause I do have a little bit of a film background and just that whole kind of classical kind of filmmaking. And, you know, I always thought that I would take filmmaking, I would take screenwriting, I would adapt it to YouTube. But what I'm realizing now is that those mediums are going to be taking YouTube and adapting it to them. You know, it's, I feel like YouTube, I feel like film and everything is going to become more like YouTube versus the other way around. So I'm very happy yeah. in this kind of position and learning that YouTube is kind of, it's its own thing. You know, you have to learn it. It's its own thing. And other people are going to kind of, I think they're going to follow suit because it's all about optimization. It's all about making content as enjoyable as possible and, and distilling it down to like its core elements. So it's just, it's such a good practice in creativity and everything like that. And the program is just such a perfect fit for that with like the right people inside so yeah practice does make perfect so having you know forcing yourself to do that one video a week is is just invaluable uh, as far as youtube goes and as you say the workshops um hayden hillier smith who is logan right. paul's editor as you said yeah. is just an absolute just he's on a whole new level he's so incredibly talented yeah. this sort of thing so yeah. every word that comes out of his mouth is just a gold mine so uh yeah i i thought that masterclass that he he delivered was excellent and i think he's got another one is that right he's got more than one yeah session i think i think yeah him and mac are doing another one as well that's right yeah so yeah so, looking yeah. forward to that the community as well i think it's one of the greatest things about yeah. the course literally just being able yeah. to jump in a chat room and ask people is this a good idea or not what should my thumbnail be it's just great to get all the feedback from hundreds of people yeah i mean i've been doing that you've probably seen i mean i've seen you do it but i've, I've been doing that a lot with all of my thumbnails and that's I didn't expect that to be really part of it as, of the course. I didn't, that wasn't one of the big selling points that they advertised, but mm. yeah, like the, the advice from each other about uh, thumbnails, uh, not just my own thumbnails, but like looking at other people's thumbnails and going, well, what would make that better? What, what would make that more clickable? And then you can sort of take that advice and apply it to your own thumbnails. It's really useful. And I think everybody's thumbnails are improving as, as the weeks go by. And it's really cool to see. So yeah, definitely, as you say, the community aspect of it is mm. something that I didn't think I would use very much, but it's it's really active. And the fact that Eric and Mac and themselves are so active on the community yeah, is yeah. great. I feel like I've learned more from telling other people how to improve their thumbnails 
and I have yeah. just like posting how can I improve mine because you just start thinking about it more from kind of like an outside perspective yeah and if there's something that's like well there's something not quite right about that but what is it and then when you're making your own mm -hmm. family you're like ah yes I don't I want to avoid you know leaving that big empty space or oh yeah I think I should make that a little bit bigger um it's yeah. excellent I mean the very first week I think maybe the first day um there was a thumbnail that I posted and Eric gave me advice himself which I was like wow this is great awesome. yeah. so uh, yeah the fact that they're so invested in it and they're so um they're so you know interested in actually helping people that's why they started the course in the first place um it's it's fantastic and I think us being sort of the pilot group that would they, we'll probably get sort of special preferential treatment in a way because we're the guinea pigs what do you think has been the most valuable if you had to single out one part would it be the thumbnail advice would it be the workshops what would be the most you know value for money as far as the uh creator now is so far there's been so many things it's hard to pick yeah. but for me personally it's been the posting a video every week and i know it sounds kind of like a simple thing like just post a video every week but i spent so much time learning all the other things and the algorithm and all of that you know I spent the last six months kind of just working on all of that and just as kind of breaking this mold of like, I need to post a video every week, no matter what, I have to get it out. It's just been so exactly what I needed. Because I'm very much like a tinkerer where I will just sit there and just kind of like mold this holy perfect thing, you know, and raise it from the ashes and get 5 million views. And um, I just have that mentality. So getting a video out, whether it's done or not or just kind of just compressing into that has just been so useful and, and youtube really is a game about consistency so just kind of really understanding that and bringing it all together that's been the best it's, it's been really good and 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 developing those habits and those kind of you know making a video every week and and it's kind of getting a little bit easier i feel like and i feel like it will just get keep getting easier as you kind of pump these out so that that for me has been has been the best and seeing all the other people doing it too and motivating and the community that kind of ties into that kind of idea i was looking at your channel and i mean you you posted a few videos over the past few years but i mean you, i think yeah. you've only got 11 public videos so um mm -hmm. this is a fairly you know this this consistency is is fairly new have you seen much a great deal of success have these videos that we've been doing weekly so far i mean we're only in week three right now but have they been performing well have they been well received yeah so my, my latest video has been um pretty well received i'd say it's my it's it's been doing the best out of every video i've posted so far in the early stages which is really good but aside from that it's kind of even just like letting go of the success of how the video is going to do you know just kind of falling in love with the craft of like just sitting there and making the videos because actually making the videos is really fun whether it gets a lot of views or if it doesn't get any views um but yeah, like you said, like, you know, I really only have a couple videos. I only have like seven videos on my channel and some of them go back like five, six years ago when I was doing professional gaming. Um, and I just wasn't used to posting YouTube videos. I would just sit at my computer and just, you know, play games for 12 hours a day and just stream. Um, this whole thing about, you know, putting posting regular content and stuff like it just was never, it's a whole different kind of way of thinking about things for me. Um, but I don't know. I think my latest video, I'm really proud of it. I'm really happy with how it came out. And I don't see a quality difference in my latest video that took one week to make and my other videos that took, some of them even took like a month or two to make. It's like, oh. I'm getting like the same thing. So obviously there is something that I'm not, you know, I'm not like, I'm kind of, there's a lot of wasted time there. It feels like, so yeah, it's really good. It's, that, it's like a, it's like a curve. So you've got the, the top 90% of getting the video to that you know, a pretty standard yeah. level. And then you can spend yeah. so much longer and just make minimal. Um, exactly. So yeah. You've got to you know, edit in. Yeah. yeah. Knowing when to stop is is a skill, really. <laughs> just in life in general, I think. And now with the program, you don't need to know. You just have to post it by <laughs> then. And by then Saturday so evening, that, that cut off point. Ellie, what yeah. would you say is the most valuable part of creating now for you so far? Like John said, there's so many different things, but I think the most valuable thing that I've learned over mainly the last week really is learning what what type of content I actually want to make. I think one of the most valuable workshops, like all of them have been incredible and I'm very obsessed with like editing. So it's been great to like hear from uh, Hayden and Ma. I don't know if you guys went to it, the workshop with Zach on Saturday. 
No, he, I need he to was catch talk- up on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, was, he was talking a lot about like what what your goal is, what your overall all goal is with YouTube and where you want, like how to get there. And I think I just kind of realized that a lot of the videos, not all of them, but a lot of videos I have made have not necessarily, some of, that, some of them I haven't enjoyed making. I've just kind of made them thinking it might blow up. And I think I need to start, well, I am starting to kind of like focus more on what the kind of like five-year plan is with my content rather than like, where do I want to be in five years and then working back to what can I be doing now to get there rather than, because there's some videos where say if I like, had a million subscribers tomorrow there's a lot of videos on my channel which I wouldn't want to carry on making so I think for the remainder of the course I'm going to focus on really kind of just making videos that I'm going to like genuinely enjoy so I think that's probably the like biggest thing I've learned from this so far and it's crazy that it's only two weeks in it feels like we've been doing this for like months yeah. and we're only a third of the way through the course so I'm really excited to see like what else is to come yeah, and you mentioned there your uh, your sort of five year plan. Um, if you don't mind delving into that, what what is your five year plan? What where would you where do you see yourself in five years? I always want to be creating content. I don't want to necessarily put like a number or a metric on what. So I don't want to be like I want ten million subscribers, but I want a loyal audience and I want to grow it as big as possible and have an impact on people's lives through entertainment, through inspiration, motivation which I think a lot of my content has been centered around just trying to make people laugh. Whereas I feel like I'm kind of missing that motivational, inspirational kind of side of it. So I think that's what I'm going to be focusing a lot more on. But in terms of like where I actually want to be, I mean, I'm very business minded. So I'd like to um, maybe open up a couple of businesses. I want to kind of make Ellie Marie TV into a production company. So like YouTube is one strand of it. And then I make kind of like music videos and maybe like some Netflix shows. And then I also want to open up like loads of charities as well. So I feel like that's more of a 10 year plan than a five year plan. But that's awesome. I'm just that. focusing on the YouTube at the moment. And... You can't fault your ambition. And I mean, I think yeah. with the trajectory <laughs> you're on right now, I think you, you could well be on your way. Because I mean, I think you, you'd be growing pretty well. I think your, your video that you did last week, the Sidemen sort of parody one. Yeah, that immediately yeah. just skyrocketed up to a thousand yeah. views. Didn't it? Yeah. So that was incredible. Awesome. I, was, I saw that, that you posted it on the Geneva, and I was like, "How has it already got like four hundred views? You just posted it." Yeah, them. this is what I'm trying to focus on for this week's video because Max workshop was very much about retention and editing for retention, which is something I've struggled with because that video kind of skyrocketed to a thousand views, but a lot of people were the retention wasn't great on it. So I didn't mm-hmm. really make it engaging enough. Whereas I think that video idea, if I'd made that a really good, if I'd kept the pace enough on it and it was obviously a lot more engaging and the retention was higher, I think that could have like blown up. So I think I need to focus on the retention this week and then trying to, for the last half of the course, get both right, the retention and the video idea. So Yeah, I think there's one thing that I saw Hayden Hillier Smith say in a workshop that was, uh, he, he phrases it kill your darlings which is if there's yeah. a shot that you really like but it doesn't really contribute much to the overall story and it's just like oh it's a really it's a pretty shot but it doesn't actually help and it's just yeah. adding five seconds to the video that's going to make people click off just kill yeah. it it's not needed yeah. and I think it's, it's always sort of in the back of my mind as I'm editing I'm like is this necessary to the overall story or can this mm, yeah. you know, help retention so yeah, there's there's a lot of things that have been said in these workshops that have, uh, have have stuck with me, and I think the fact that people have been posting their entire like notes list on the Geneva community mm-hmm. have been really useful because you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's what he said. People are getting really engaged, and it, it's fantastic. Spe- actually, speaking of Geneva, how are your um how are your teams? Your because we've been allocated teams on Geneva, and uh, I'm team 27, and uh, we. We're doing fairly well. I've got two team members who haven't actually signed up yet on Creator Now, which isn't great. <laughs> yeah. um, everybody else is is fine and lovely, and yeah. we are checking out each other's videos. How, how are your teams doing? Uh, yeah, my team's doing good, pretty good. Um, we're team two, so almost there at the front. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have one of our members got kind of sick, and he hasn't posted a video yet. Um, but aside from that, 
which it obviously sucks. And, you know, like if you're sick or anything like that, like just the program, go take care of your health and all that. Um, it's more important. But aside from that, people have been posting regularly, feels like, and there's a little bit of discussion back and forth, kind of helping each other out and I'll have like a little check in every now and then, um, see where everyone's at. Um, definitely do want to increase the discussion a little bit more. I think that we could kind of maybe hop into the team. There's a team voice chat as well. It'd be nice to kind of get to know the team a little bit more. Yeah. So I think I might make a little bit of like a push towards that and kind of get to know everyone a little bit more, um, a little bit of a little deeper level and toss some ideas back because it's a little bit easier and a little more controlled kind of smaller environment to kind of build a little bit of a better connection. Um, so there's that opportunity. But um, I love the whole idea of teams. I love that um, the little competitive aspect. I'm a very competitive person. So this is very uh, kind of good for me to push the content out and uh, collaborate and with people. So, yeah. Yeah, I've not, we've not used the voice chat thing either. And I think mm -hmm. it's partly due to the time zone issues because yeah. you know, we've got people all over the world and uh, it doesn't always line up. Like there was a- um, Right, you have to schedule now, it in, right? Yeah, there was a creator now a uh, rock paper scissors tournament last night, I think, um, mm. which looked great, but it was at like one a.m. UK time. I was like, I, I can't <laughs> yeah. do this. Yeah. It was the same with the workshops. I'm sure you found this, Ellie, but you know the 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 workshop with Hayden and Mac and stuff. They didn't. They start at midnight. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It was really hard to actually attend live, which sucks. But it's good that they record them. Um, yeah, Air Act roast as well the other day. I yeah. I joined that one and it went till two a.m. and I was. Oh, literally man. falling asleep by the end of it <laughs> How, how's yeah. your team ellie how, how have you been uh, connecting with those guys our team's been slacking a bit this week i mean four oh, of goodness. our members haven't posted we have like an instagram group but half of them haven't really been very talkative so they're not actually like we've been trying to reach them and ask them if they want to be in the group but they're not really responding so there's mm. about half of us in this instagram group and they're they're all really active and like we talk and we talk every day in the Instagram group and there's a couple of like Brazilian guys that I were talking about collabing and them coming over to England so wow it's cool. been great but there are like I'm, I'd say I'm closer with the other members of my group than my, my actual buddy because he joined very late like signing mm. up and he's also Same not been posting and I've been messaging him and he's not really been replying so mm. yeah um, that's the I hope same he's okay me too. but yeah. yeah, I like our team, but they need to make sure they're all posted. I try to mess reach out and message um everyone, but I don't know what people have going on, so it could be any reason why they yeah. haven't posted. But well, for the first, I think maybe even still, like my my buddy is one of the people who didn't actually sign up, <laughs> so um, I have no yeah. I have no buddy to help hold me accountable for things, which isn't great. <laughs> you never know. You're a free man. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> you never know your buddy could be mr beast i haven't seen him in any of the teams yet and apparently he signed up for the course so yeah <laughs> he's probably um, harvesting information about the course <laughs> in, yeah in the shadows <laughs> yeah i think yeah. possibly i think eric might have just like fabricated that to get people to sign up yeah because that would have been yeah. a very ta tactical uh uh, tactic yeah to do that that'd be funny and could cause... you imagine the scoreboard his team would like instantly yeah. In first place it'd probably break the um create an our website his like yeah. numbers that he's pulling in yeah some of the people especially if you're like a smaller channel and you get a video blow up you get like one million percent yeah. <laughs> viewership yeah. increase it's like, okay yeah. Yeah. yeah well i see uh Eric himself is at the top of most of the uh the global leaderboards i think which um, nice. is a is a big boost for team number one which he's in yeah so i think yeah. that team is probably going to win yeah, yeah. you get him in your group chat too so that's nice. Um, I think it was all very like experimental though, isn't it? He, I don't think they fully under know what they're doing yet. And it's great to just be a part of it and see them kind of go through the trial and error phases right. to see what works. Cause they kind of made like a, a women's group in, uh, I don't know how you say it, Geneva or Gnava. I call it different things, but Geneva. In, yeah, Geneva. Yeah. They made a women's group and a lot of them have been saying like, they kind of make longer form content. So it, They've been taking a lot of the advice, but the kind of like sort of sh short, fast edits cut out all kind of like breathing room in the videos to just make sure it's all kind of compiled together to keep retention. It doesn't exactly work for people that maybe make a half hour video just talking. 
which some like one of the girls has got like a hundred thousand subscribers like she's quite a oh, big um yeah nice. she's quite a big channel and she joined but she said it she struggled because obviously some of the advice she can't really use on her channel but i think it's just trial and error isn't it i think it would be great for round two um i'll probably like he's been asking for advice but i think round two they should bring kind of a more diverse um group of creators to help in the workshops like maybe some podcasters and things like that yeah. to really kind of yeah because if they are like they're like they kind of focus on on their side and I remember that they didn't really have much to comment on for like kind of sketch comedy YouTube channels and stuff too. Yeah. So, yeah. so getting that perspective would be great. Yeah. They, they, they've somewhat accommodated. They've made a, a, a YouTube shorts section on Geneva and they've made an educational mm -hmm. channel section on Geneva. But um, yeah, I mean, there's so many different niches yeah. that are being explored and there's so many yeah. different types of channels. Uh, like there's people yeah. in my group who focus on kids content and I'm like, great i don't know anything about kids content or how yeah. to make it so <laughs> yeah. it's it's difficult to you know give advice because you're like i don't really understand the target audience that you're getting at so i can't help you <laughs> they have been very open to advice though they've, i mean they've made that um tech support and questions and feedback channels so they're very open to listening to people's advice which is fantastic because you don't always get that yeah. i think that's the great thing they, they've literally just held the hands up and been like we're not 100 percent sure what we're doing yeah uh, we're going to try our best tell us what we're doing wrong I think that's great yeah that's one thing I've noticed from Eric and Mac is like they have that same drive and mentality that like even like the smallest YouTuber has they still have that mentality yeah. where they want to keep growing and just keep harvesting information and keep learning and iterating and I feel like as long as you can hold on to that that's going to really serve you well sticking with you John how did you first come across Eric what was his what was the first video you saw of him if you can remember yeah I think it was something related to like Logan Paul or, or, or something or rather like tied into that and the fact that I don't remember means that YouTube probably like shoved it in my face <laughs> and it was like yeah. this watch this yeah mine was yeah. Logan's Logan Paul's couches I bought Logan yeah. Paul's couches yeah yeah I found him through a, a different route I um I he kept popping up everywhere I looked on YouTube I was like who is <laughs> this guy because I think I yeah. first heard of him when he was on um Colin and Samir's podcast and I was like, hmm, this guy yeah, sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. And then I'm subscribed to Hayden Hillier Smith's channel. And he did like a roast of Eric and Max videos. And they were like, mm -hmm. oh, you're so right. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was I like, well, th these, these guys are popping up on every single channel. Like, who are they? And then I think yeah. finally I, I caved in and I started watching his videos. I was like, wow, these are really high quality. And then I figured out that, oh, wow, he, he was at zero subscribers a year ago. How? <laughs> Yeah, so that is crazy. Everybody finds him different ways. But yeah, the, I think the Logan Paul stuff really uh, boosted him into the, the viewership Definitely, of masses. Yeah, yeah. it's something to, to say to that too, is that like between us three, we've found him through like a Logan Paul or through uh, Hayden Hillier Smith or something like that. So again, it just feels like that definitely is something worth um, looking into if you want to just, if your content is good and it's you, you, if you're feeling like it's getting really good, you know, try to find those connections, find those audiences and stuff feels like there's potential there. Yeah, the power of collabor collaboration should not be uh, <laughs> underplayed. It can yeah. usually help. I actually had a um, crazy idea. If someone can see it, well, it's a bit past it now. COVID didn't allow it and I also didn't have the money to do it. But when, <laughs> do you remember when um, Logan was like unsure whether he'd be flight fighting Floyd? It like kept getting delayed. Mm -hmm. I came up with an idea to, to fly all the way to Puerto Rico Puerto Rico, hunt him down and give him a fight contract to try and sign it. But I thought, I can't, I'm not legally allowed to leave the UK. And also I don't have the money to spend on trying to find Logan Paul. Yeah, those are two fairly major hurdles. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's, it's a great idea. And if you'd pulled it off, that would have just been, you know, insane. Other than Eric, who are some other creators that you particularly look, look up to, sticking with you, Ellie? Uh, True Geordie, have you seen his podcasts? I yeah. love his podcasts. I used to love Joe Weller back when he did his skits and stuff. He does do a podcast now that I watch, but he's not. he doesn't really post much anymore. He used to like syndicates vlogs. I don't know if he's still doing them now. I kind of like long form. I, I watch a lot of uh, like podcasts and stuff. Like I, Pretty much every YouTuber podcast, like Colin and Samir, Impulsive. Impulsive. Yeah, there's a lot to learn from podcasts. Uh, wh yeah. What about you, John? Who, who are your... Uh... 
your creators that you look up to? There's so many. Um, Mr. Beast is crazy, first of all. Um, yeah. uh, Peter McKinnon, originally. Um, Casey Neistat is a big one for me. And yeah. just a little bit like, I love Peter McKinnon and the B-roll and all of that kind of stuff. But I feel like people are starting to understand how to do B-roll now. And you can kind of, you know, you can kind of get it done in the movements. But so I'll go and I'll watch sometimes a little bit older Peter McKinnon content. I'll be like, oh, like this is as interesting as it was when I watched it. But then I'll watch a Casey Neistat like 10 years ago. And I'm like, wow, this is still so good because of that, like yeah. that story aspect in there that he's so good at. So he really inspires me because he has this timeless content that you can just come back to it and watch it. And it's still, he still, he understood these like core fundamentals, which is just awesome. So Casey's is a big inspiration for me. Um, and just a lot of different gaming channels and stuff like that, because that is my background. So those two, as you mentioned, are um, mm -hmm. big inspirations of mine. And I mean, like you're sort of a, um, you like the, 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 the kit aspect and you, you make videos about lenses and stuff. So I, I, if I'd been able to put money on it, I would have said Peter McKinnon. I bet he's up there on your your list because mm -hmm. he's definitely yeah. up there on mine as well. Like I, uh, yeah. I watch his, every video he makes and learn yep. so much. One thing that I want to do with my channel, and I just think about this idea of like, when I first found Peter McKinnon, I almost felt like I was like getting like hacks to, to yeah. video editing. Like I just gobbled up this content. I was like, wow, like this is, feels like cheating almost. Like this is so good, you know? And that feeling that I had is like what caused me to binge his video, which I think just skyrocketed him and his personality and everything like that. So like, ideally, like I want to create that feeling for other people, you know, where you come in yeah. and you're like, wow, this feels like cheating. You know, like, this is awesome. Like I found this little YouTuber, like, I don't even want to tell anyone about him. I don't want to send any likes, like, this is so good. I need it just for myself. So if I can capture that feeling that Peter McKinnon, you know, created in me and, and Casey Neistat and stuff. That would be awesome, you know. It's hard to get that sort of that special source, but um, mm -hmm. those who can achieve it, which I'm sure you you could easily be able to, um, you, <laughs> maybe maybe one day, it can yeah, it can really yeah. make you just skyrocket, as you say. In in the UK, I don't know if you've heard of him, Ellie. Um, Max Fosh is probably my my top. Yeah, producer. I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched yeah, him too. Oh yeah, cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he recently ran for London Mayor, and it was just yeah. <laughs> what a series! <laughs> what a series! Yeah. That was great. I've he I've heard of him. I've heard. Of Have you heard of a uh, Nico? I can't say his last name. Amalana. Nico. Amalana. Yeah, Nico. Amalana. Yeah, Nico. Yeah, yeah. Some of his videos. The one where he like opened up a fake McDonald's. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a McDonald's employee, I bet you uh, found that yeah, pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. One of the uh, creators in our group actually went driving around the same McDonald's until the milkshake machine broke. Nice. That old chestnut, the, the broken machine at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, ours is constantly. I, I said to him, if you came, because it took him like the whole day till it broke. I said, if you came around ours, you wouldn't even be able to get one milkshake because it's always broken. <laughs> so. But the other uh, YouTuber I meant to say that I forgot about, it. she's just hit 100,000. She's still, she's grown really fast this year, but. Her name is Emily D. Baker. She's like a lawyer who's like retired and come to YouTube. And she basically gives all, you know how there's drama channels that kind of cover all the YouTube drama. She yeah. does it in a way that's like very factual, covers all the lawsuits, covers like the James Charles, the David Dobrik stuff and like says factually, like whether this stuff is illegal, what would happen in a court of law. And I think it's just a really refreshing cool. kind of channel to just get kind of just wow. get a breakdown of what's going on but not with the kind of like over dramatic everyone's mm -hmm. getting cancelled she kind of does it very like professionally yeah it's an interesting slant on things because i mean i can't stand someone like keemstar who just sensationalizes yeah. everything but yeah that's sort of yeah. a very matter of fact way of looking at things from you know a professional or an ex-professional standpoint that's yeah. you know i hadn't considered that concept but i'm i'm sure it's absolutely brilliant content so i i yeah. check that one out mm. myself Going back to how we found Eric, um, Ellie, you and I have encountered each other before because uh, yes. you made a video where you impersonated me. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to delve a little bit further into I that. I need a link for that video later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I completely forgot about that for a minute. I forgot that's how we... Because um, I remember I, I found... I don't know if you know of... Um, there's an app. I can't remember the name of it. But you can basically search across all of YouTube for channels like you put in the size of the channel the kind of whether it's a comedy gaming and what area so I put like the UK under like so many thousand and entertainment based and I just 
started like messaging around loads of creators because I wanted to kind of like reach out to people and just talk to other YouTubers and stuff. To be able to filter content like that is really, yeah, that's, you have to find that app and send that to <laughs> Yeah, I'll send you the link. I know that Social Blade has sort of a slightly similar thing, but it, you can't really um, add too many filters to it, but it, it sort of analyzes your channel and then it, it lists sort of similar size channels who are growing at the same rate under the same yeah. uh, content. I think it's called style as yours. YouTube, YouTube Channel Crawler. I think that's what it's called. Okay, okay. I shall write that yeah. one down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I want to find yeah, people in my, my area too. It'd be cool. Like other YouTubers that are kind of on the same journey that you can actually like go meet and stuff. Yeah, I'm surprised that that's not talked about more because that seems like a really powerful thing to network with other channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, it's a bit difficult to sift through just because there's a lot of channels that kind of, yeah. that kind of just random accounts that have been made, but you can actually put on the channel crawler how when they last uploaded. So I always put like, they must have, they have to have uploaded within the last month. Uh, to really come up because a lot of people obviously just make like youtube channels and never post anything but also networking how did you how did you find that um your success on tiktok uh, affected the your, the growth of your channel because you did a whole video on uh, getting a hundred thousand tiktok views in a week did you find that anybody came over to your channel and viewed it from there or was it completely polar opposites there's probably a way i can like actually check how many people have clicked on the tiktok link to my channel I've been experimenting a lot with TikTok and I found that the more kind of crazy and weird you are on TikTok, the more there's a lot of hate and abuse on TikTok and it, it makes people comment more on your videos and then it pushes it to more people. So I've, I started like a series called Ketchup Girl where I was literally eating like the strangest of foods with ketchup and it literally blew up. Um, I think I'm on like 10,000 followers now, but Wow. One of my videos, I did. I made like a steak and like just covered it in ketchup and gave it to my dad. And Gordon Ramsay <laughs> duetted the video. No and, way. Uh, of, yeah, of my dad eating the steak. So when that happened, that's when like my followers started like growing loads on TikTok. And I did notice my YouTube su subscribers were going up a lot. So yeah, it's definitely. Wow. I mean, it's not like it's not like I've gained thousands and thousands of subscribers overnight, but like. 10 to 50 extra subscribers from like posting tiktok videos is like not it's a nice little boost at all <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and to you're have... your kid tiktok on its own anyway so it's yeah awesome. to have gordon ramsay duet is quite <laughs> something to you know put on the old cv yeah. that's yeah. uh <laughs> amazing how about you john Everyone have, you, in... oh, go on. have you found uh growing your channel and different aspects that you've you've chosen yeah so i had one video that kind of popped off and got twenty thousand views and that netted me about 650 subscribers from just that one video. Wow. So I see the power in making a good video that people like. Um, so yeah, aside from that, I haven't really been using other platforms as much. Um, I do kind of want to get into TikTok, but maybe more from like a tutorial standpoint, give mm. a little like quick tutorials or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I just, I, I had one video do well, and that was just, I didn't even post it anywhere. I just, the algorithm just blessed me and just took me away to the promised land and just, you know, got me a lot of views and uh, got me a lot of subs from that. So if I can kind of capture that and make some more content like that, I feel like there's a path forward. You know, if I get 600 subscribers every video, that would be a step in the right direction. Yeah, similar with my my most viewed video is uh, one I made back in 2015, which was uh, mini bowling trick shots, which I, I hate the video. I, it would have been released a long <laughs> time ago if it had gotten a few reviews. Um, yeah. But it sort of broke all the rules because like Mac in his workshop recently was saying like, oh, it's all about, you know, the biggest retention possible. You need to make longer -ish form content so people can stay for a long period of time, watch more adverts. High click through right. rate is absolutely key. But this video had none of that. It's two minutes long. So the average view duration is really short. Click through yeah. rate, not perfect. But for whatever reason, YouTube decided to just push it on the suggested feeds of hundreds of thousands of people. And it got, yeah. um, I mean, it's, in its first month, it got maybe 100 views. It was really just bog right. standard. But then yeah, somehow, true it just started picking up. It was getting a thousand views a day for like three months straight. It was crazy. 
and wow. I, I I have no explanation for it. I cannot. I I've looked at all the analytics so many times. And I'm like, how yeah. <laughs> how has this yeah. worked? So there's a, there's a huge element of luck in it. I mean, you can study all the books, you can go to all the um all the workshops, and you can sort of engineer your own luck, luck in a way by you know cheating the system and getting really clickable thumbnails and titles, etc. But there is even still a huge element of luck. Uh, what I've found, and I'm, I assume it's roughly the same with you. Well, also too, you know, I'm sure the algorithm and everything was a little bit different yeah. as well, like back then. So maybe they were looking at different aspects or, or whatnot, but that's a good point. Yeah. You know, every video I put out, it's like 10, 50 views, hundred views, but I'm like, you know, you could go far still. Like I'm going to leave you for like a month or two and, you know, maybe you'll blow up. Um, so it's really kind of just leaving a video out and just posting it and forgetting about it because you're not going to get that instant feedback where like when I would stream, I would know, okay, this was a good stream. People liked it. They're typing in my chat. They're saying like, this is awesome. But for YouTube, it's like, just set it and forget it. It's kind of hard to do that. But after you get used to that, then any of your videos can really blow up. Even if it gets five views in the first couple of days. Yeah. Delayed gratification almost. It's yeah, a, a I, slow burn. Mm -hmm. Go yeah, ahead. I actually... Time. I had that recently with a, I did when Mr. Beast um, started Mr. Beast Burgers, we didn't have it here in the UK. So I made a video uh, basically opening up my own Mr. Beast Burgers and like delivering them around to random people's houses. <laughs> and when it came to the UK, because he's re recently launched yes, uh, some in stores London. in London, my video yeah. like gained like 3000 views out of nowhere because obviously wow, like people nice. were searching for it. So yeah, you're in the right place, right time. It's yeah awesome. literally like any video from like months ago i've had it with like a couple of videos like they've just kind of been stagnant on the channel and then something happens that just all of a sudden kicks a bit of an algorithm and the video yeah. get, gains quite a few views so. that's smart if you can kind of like predict where trends will go and kind of just put some videos in ahead of time like ready to kind of like take some of that viewership would be, would be a good idea yeah again that sort of trying to predict the future and engineer your own success it's very difficult and it's very you know, yeah, yeah the chances of yeah. failure are huge but yeah. there's the odd time that you can actually make it work i mean yeah, as you, you just say, need one what would either of you say is the most challenging part of making youtube videos that the average viewer wouldn't uh, appreciate in my opinion it's probably the editing because people have no idea how much time people put into it the edit like Mac was saying, yeah. he spends like three straight days without sleep working on an, an average Airag video. So uh, yeah. I think people have no idea how long that takes. But is there anything else that people potentially don't appreciate? I'd say maybe like the planning and logistics of it, because yeah, like the the first submission I did for this course, the like Sidemen parody, I was like, like Mac said, it was three days straight of just like no sleep editing like there was yeah. one day where I did like 17 hours straight just behind my computer to make sure I got it out in time but like yeah. the actual setting up of that video because obviously I, I just made like a fake um tinder account and message around loads of like random people saying do you want to be in a youtube video where you have to basically go on a date with my mate and it's going to be like kind of like impractical joker style where it, the date's getting controlled through an earpiece but literally the the day of the shoot a few people dropped out and we it was about a fall through so i just went back on um tinder and started messaging around loads of people and luckily there was like two people that were like yeah i can come it was literally two hours before and they're like yeah i'll come i'll do it because wow. they like live right next to the studio so Dang. i think there's just there's tons of stuff that people just like never see like even my mates that help me in the videos they'll go out and film like I did like an I'm a celebrity parody parody and I had to run up the mountain we went on to do the challenges three times because someone had dropped out so I didn't have the extra person to plant the clues so I had to like keep running up and down this mountain to get all the clues planted whilst kind of following them and making sure they were on the right path so and then it's like the shoot takes ages and then the, like you say as well the edit is just another monster in itself yeah that's a good point yeah mm -hmm. the planning and logistics especially for a video as complicated as that we've sort of got to set clues um because you know the, the average uh you know gaming video or something potentially doesn't have as much planning in, involved in it um, yeah. obviously there, there are exceptions i feel like 
the YouTube videos that feel the most natural and authentic are oftentimes the ones that have the most effort put into where it's like, you know, these people will put in, you know, you'll do 10 takes just to get one that like feels authentic and feels genuine and like feels like how you want to like portray the message out. You'll go and you'll, you know, record things for hours and hours. Like they, they put in, that's a big thing for me. Just as you kind of get into the space, you realize how hard everyone is working, how hard Logan Paul is working, how hard Eric and Mac and, it is just, it's not like, you can't be understated that like, you know, they're grinding eight, 10 hours a day, every single day, making these videos, making this content, doing retakes, doing reshoots, you know, Mr. Beast will crap, uh, scrap a whole video if he doesn't yeah. like it, you know, and they're working so incredibly hard. Um, and, and it's at the end of the day, what you see is something that feels like, oh, like, you know, like I could do that, or that's not, that's not that difficult or oh he's just like sitting and just like reacting to a video but it's like how many videos are they watching and they Mr. Beast probably has like a whole team of people that are like finding these videos well what's the best video how's it going to fit in you know how are they going to structure it what clips are they going to show first and all this thing you know it's like this you know like if you want to get up to that kind of crazy level like they're thinking about all these things um and it's like these videos where you'll see someone and they're just talking to the camera and it's kind of just this natural thing. Like these people are like some of the smartest people society has to offer. You know, they are literal geniuses. Yeah. And the fact that they are getting these millions of views is a testament to, to how smart they are and how they can take that and build a business, but still kind of relate to the audience and feel like they're a person and feel like you can connect with them and kind of build a kind of like a relationship with them. So yeah, I yeah. just so much respect, really, especially doing this is like doctors and everything are getting all the respect, but I'm like, YouTubers are working just as hard <laughs> and, you know, even harder. So, yeah. Yeah, it's Mr. possibly is on another level. Yeah, yeah, it's possibly why so many pe- young people nowadays are like, oh, I want to be YouTubers because they they get the impression that, you know, it's just dead easy career and then you make loads <laughs> of money and yeah. it's just yeah. effortless that like you literally just set up a camera and start going and everybody starts flocking to your channel but there's so yeah. much more to it than that and mm-hmm. the ability to make it appear effortless but there's actually so much behind the scenes is a huge yeah. skill so, and you're everything right too like you're you're, you're the screenwriter you're the videographer yeah. you're the director you're the producer you know you're everything and you have to know how to do everything pretty well depending on what you're doing you know I started with the cinematography and I was like, that was really important. And I realized I worked backwards. <laughs> I learned all the gear and all that stuff first. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's actually not like, yeah. it, it, it has a little bit of an impact, but it's not as important as the other side of it. But you have to know, you have to know a little bit of everything. Yeah. And speaking of yeah. gear, uh, you recently made a video about, uh, you know, this, this sig- uh, what was it, Sigma lens or Sony lens? Yeah, um, Sony lens, 35. If, uh, if you had to choose, three lenses mm-hmm. to take through your entire life yeah what would those three lenses be yeah i've um i've bought so many lenses that i've i've, I've i have a great answer it would be i have a, a 12 to 24 zoom yeah. lens f2.8 i have a 24 to 70 f2.8 and just a 70 to 200 2.8 just the it's like a little bit different from the 16 to 35 but all the way to 200 yeah you don't need anything basic. else you don't need the 1.4, all that kind of stuff. Like, uh, you, it blows the background out, and you can't get anything in focus anyway. And especially if you're kind of making more authentic, naturalistic content, you do want that. This is getting a little bit nerdy now, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you, you want that kind of. You, you don't want your background completely blown out. People are gonna feel like you're they're watching like a movie or something. And something I realize is like, if you're trying to make cinematic content, you're trying to make like movie content. Now you're competing with Hollywood, you know, and like your content is now compared to billion dollar budgets. Like, I don't know what you want to be playing in that realm, you know? So if you can kind of like keep it with YouTube and keep it in that stage, then you're competing with YouTube and other people that are individuals like making content. So for what I want to do, 12 to 200 and that zoom range and just being able to reframe my shot really easily and all of that and big believer in that now and kind of. I had to buy a lot of different lenses and gear to kind of realize that, but it's where I've come to. And there are three lenses that you would uh, choose, Ellie, or three pieces of gear that you couldn't live without? I've been using my Nikon DSLR D3 to 100,000 uh, 
for like four or five years now. It's I, I should really get a new camera because it's getting to the point where the lens is like sticking and crunching and stuff. But oh. <laughs> I just I love it a lot. <laughs> and it's just always yeah. been my camera that I've been using plus cameras a lot of money. But yeah, I'd definitely say the my Nikon, my GoPro, because it's great for just like action shots. Probably I recently but well, I say recently last year, because I'd saved to kind of go traveling and then coronavirus hit, I got a MacBook instead. So oh, nice. I definitely say that I was using like this really, really old computer to do my initial YouTube videos. And it would take me like a month to edit one. And since getting the Mac, it's literally like a few days and it's great. So I definitely could not live, yeah. live without that. Well, I'd say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it sounds like your camera is getting to the point where it yeah. is broke. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if it does the job, there's no point in uh, no real reason to replace it. And if, you know, if you've got the option of spending a thousand pounds on making two or three really good videos with, you know, substantial budgets behind them that could t- take off or spending a thousand pounds on a camera that, you know, it'll make yeah. videos a little bit higher quality. You know, yeah. is it really worth it? I don't yeah, think people so. <laughs> don't really care about the quality on YouTube, I don't feel. As long as they can hear you and see you clearly, it's not really. Yeah. Big emphasis on, on audio too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I remember I, I saw Casey Neistat interviewed Mr. Beast one time. And something that really stuck out for me in that interview is that Mr. Beast, I think, said he got 200,000 subscribers. And the only piece of gear he had to film and edit, well, maybe not edit, but to film and record everything on was his iPhone 5. And I was like, yeah. 200,000? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. insane. So it just proves yeah. that you don't need the gear. You just need really good ideas that you can execute well. You know, I come from a film background. I did commercial videography and everything like that. I can come into YouTube. I have sick gear. And I've just like learned the hard way. I just get slapped in the face, like back and forth. Like, no one cares about that, man. Like, wow. if, if you want to do tutorials and stuff like that, you know, obviously it's good to have a good picture. But even then, your personality how you connect with the audience, your story time and time again. And uh, I'm a big testament, like throwing money at, at your video quality and stuff, will not do anything because you can throw money at it and make a good quality, but it still needs that. So now you're doing like 10 times more effort because now your video has to be good, but your story still needs to be just as amazing. Yeah. Um, Having watched your videos, your video quality is fantastic. But, you well, know, thank as, you. <laughs> as Hayden Hillier Smith yeah. says time and time again, story is king. And yeah, you can't underestimate that. Nice isn't going to get someone to sit and watch the whole video. You, you, you yeah. can just look at a picture, <laughs> you know, yeah. like that. Ellie, I, I saw that you are a, you do some radio hosting in your sort of local radio. Are there any yeah, sort yeah. of transferable skills that you've learned doing radio that have um, you've carried over to YouTube that have improved your own videos? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is I kind of, sometimes I struggle with the number of takes I'm doing. Like I kind of just, I think of good ideas in my head, but then I, I don't always explain them well. So yeah. I think one of the things radio really helped was with was like it being live. You have to get it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to try and be as best as you can just in the moment. There's no editing. There's no, you can't change yeah. it. So I think it's definitely helped with just, I feel like sometimes, well, I am a bit of a, like a perfectionist. So it's taught me to kind of just take a few takes, pick one of them don't stress it because I used to film like a whole video and then not like and just film refilm the whole video again and it wouldn't really turn out much different so I think it's the biggest thing that like radio's taught me just one takes kind of thing and John is there any any part of your background that particularly carries well over to YouTube I mean you mentioned the the film side of things but yeah so I I used to be a professional gamer and I used to stream on Twitch and I'm still a Twitch partner even though I don't stream on there but I get the I have the badge still so cool <laughs> yeah um, it's, nice. it, it's kind of similar to radio i'd say where you're just live i'm comfortable in kind of like a live setting where i'm just kind of iterating and just talking and kind of talking as things go and channeling that and and limiting my takes to maybe like two or three takes at the most and just going with it because you know as as she was saying it was like the video is basically the same thing and you know maybe your little tonality is a little different or something like that but you're just spending all this time when you could just be making another video and if you're limiting it to those little takes then you're training yourself that i have to get it right in these takes i have to get it right in just one or two i have to get it right live and you're like you know what you're doing is like building this amazing muscle that you can just take with you and you're able to just kind of just go with it and 
kind of letting go of that perfection, I think too, is a little more of a mentality thing. And it's just going to help you make really awesome videos. So yeah, yeah. just, just go on with it. And um, another thing too, I learned from Twitch is just how to deal with like haters and all of that kind of like yeah. that validation and stuff, because you know, like I'm in the gaming scene and people are brutal in that. And, you know, like we would just trash talk each other. People will come in and trash talk me and all that. And just, just being like, I'm very numb to that. Cause I'm very much like grown up in like a computer chair. So that has definitely helped a lot kind of going into my channel. And when people comment and stuff like that, like just knowing how to deal with them and all that, I think will help me if I get any traction. I've somewhat gained some notoriety a little bit back in the day. So maybe it'd be familiar character. I don't know yet. Yeah. I feel like we, we could talk about this all day, but I mean, we've already been going for an hour or so. So I think uh, we can wrap things up. I've got one one final sort of fun thing to do with uh, with Ellie here. I've got a, a list of some of your best quotes <laughs> from your videos, oh, of which nice. there are many. Um, so if you had sort of a, an imaginary tier list uh, just to rank, you know, how, how good these quotes are in terms of, you know, how memorable and just, you know, how, how good they are as quotes. Um, I'd like okay. to hear your opinion on these. So we've got the first one is, I've got salmonella in my eye. <laughs> I'd probably give that one a seven. Okay, okay. How about, yeah, um, yeah. how about suck on that, Mr. Finger Licking Good? <laughs> I'll put that to a nine. And that's, that's the Eric one, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be a nine then, just for the that, sake of the core. That's solid. Uh, we've got, I'm sorry, Aquaman, I ate your children. What video is that from? I can't even tell you what video that's from. Uh, that was where you were eating the sushi, breaking your... I think it might have been the Arrow oh, one as well. I'll give that a five. I feel like that could have been better. Okay. Uh, we've got, after you were dancing, we've got, are you trying to scoop some ice cream or something? I feel like I could, made a, could have made a better joke there. I think I'll, I'll give that a four. Uh, same scene. You've got, ooh, I grew a tentacle. <laughs> I give that one a six. That was, <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> okay. And finally, we've got, uh, I think same video again. We've got, I'm about to go beat up my mum. <laughs> <laughs> I give that a 10. I give that a 10 out of 10. Ah, solid. <laughs> I love that. That was a great little game. <laughs> that was a great video. Um, awesome. <laughs> well, I think that's that's about all I've got. <laughs> Have you got any questions for me before we before we wrap things up? Who, who's your favorite YouTuber? Have you had to just pick one? Who, who are you putting at the top spot? Well, I think Max Fosh is certainly up there um yeah. as, as is you know Eric without saying Daniel Thrasher he's a good one he does some really funny sketch comedy but yeah if I had to pick one I'd probably say Max Fosh because I mean me and Max Fosh we've uh we, we've we've chatted in the past a little bit and I made a, a crossword video sort of parodying his his crossword series that he does um and he responded yeah. to that and he actually featured in the video he sent like a, a message at the end so that was pretty right. cool Nice. yeah i'd like to do more of those crossword videos in the in, in future because he he was like yeah i'll send more over because i'll i'll watch him and i'll uh, i'd love to see him because it's, yeah it's such a great concept yeah, like he said yeah, yeah just send them out and he shouted me out on, my, on his yeah. instagram story at like seventy thousand followers i was like ka-ching yeah yeah and about a hundred subscribers video, from just that. Made that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i think that's awesome think, maybe after two or three you might uh you know get okay you, this sure. is a bit of, a bit of much now uh, yeah but yes when, when things open up again definitely i'll uh, do another one of those what would you say is one thing that is the biggest thing you've learned from the program that's sticking with you from creator now um well i mentioned the thumbnails which i which took me by surprise by how useful it was to sort of analyze other people's yeah. thumbnails as well as get feedback on my own mm -hmm. um but yeah, I think that the workshops have just been really fantastic. I need to catch up on Zach's actually. I'll do that afterwards. But um, yeah, I think those have been just invaluable. And uh, yeah. you, know, you, you can't get that advice anywhere else. And the fact that they're, they're long form, um, as you were saying, that you know, the podcasts are really useful. But they're sort of their videos that people wouldn't put up on their channels because they're too long for the general YouTube audience. But to have that sort of right. really in-depth, step-by-step process um, for like an hour or two hour long, a workshop is just you know you're just soaking in all this you hugely useful information but yeah i think that that about wraps things up thank you both very much for your time yeah. i very much appreciate you being willing to come on the this podcast and i wish you all the best with your uh, your youtube endeavors for the rest of the course and beyond thank you and you yeah, too you thank you. yeah you too too. i'll uh, yeah. i'll link both of their channels in the, in the description so make sure to check uh, ellie and john out
thank you very much for watching if you want to be on the podcast yourself there is a uh, link in the description as well for a little form and uh, i'll see you next week Bye.